focusing on status epilepticus, but we'll talk about a few other things as, as we go through the talk as well. So status epilepticus, of course, is very common, uh, both as a, a reason to present to the hospital as well as something to happen after somebody has come to the hospital for any number of reasons. Uh, with high mortality rates uh, in convulsive epilepsy, but also in non-convulsive seizures as well, and can be refractory in almost two-thirds of patients when they've looked at it. There's a lot of associated morbidity with it. Many patients, uh, even with non-refractory status epilepticus, don't return to a functional baseline. Of course, there may be any number of reasons that that's the case. People don't go into status epilepticus for no reason, right? If they have underlying epilepsy, their outcomes are probably better, but uh, many times there are other uh, brain disorders or acute injuries that are the cause of, of the status epilepticus. With refractory status epilepticus, only 15% of patients, or approximately 15% of patients, will return to any degree of independence. <clears throat> uh, back in, in the old days, so to speak, status epilepticus used to be defined primarily as a seizure lasting a half hour or longer, which is a long time to watch a seizure happen, right? Treatment was generally applied well before that point was reached. And as time has gone on, it's been redefined. So there are two time points now, and T1 is the time when a seizure is abnormally prolonged and unlikely to terminate spontaneously. So for a convulsive seizure, that's five minutes. For a focal seizure, that's 10 minutes. For an absence seizure, those numbers are not as well known, but they estimate somewhere 10 to 15 minutes duration. Time two is when there are likely to be long-term consequences. So for a convulsive seizure, they measure that to be at about a half hour and a focal seizure about 60 minutes. For absent seizures, it's not clear that there is a time where there are definite long-term consequences. Of course, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't treat. <clears throat> and treatment, the reason this T1, T2 distinction is important is because you want to treat early, right? Obviously, there are implications to seizures ongoing late. And when they've uh, uh, studied some animal models, this is a, a depiction of GABA receptors, and on the left you have the control. And anything that's red is a GABA receptor, and anything that's green is, uh, uh, is just within the, the cell wall, right? So you can see in the control, all of the GABA receptors are lined up along the cell, cell wall, where they should be, so that they can have access to the cleft. Take that to uncontrolled status epilepticus for one hour in this case, and you see that everything that's green surrounds everything that's red. So there's been internalization of those GABA receptors. So the implication would be that as seizures go on, it may be more difficult to treat by our conventional measures. So earlier treatment uh, is going to be better, right? Adrenaline runs high up front, right? Everybody's hair is on fire. So you got to remember.